Good morning and welcome to Russell Temple Christian Methodist Episcopal Church worship service. We're certainly glad to have all of you this afternoon being a part of our worship service. It is my pleasure and my honor to introduce our worship leader for this afternoon. Sister Lillian Harris is a member of the Stewardess Board, the Spectacular Stewardess Board. She's also a member of the Lay Council. She also is a member of the Women's Missionary Society and sings with the Women's Missionary Choir. She is the mother of Toya and the grandmother of two of her favorite, her favorite granddaughter <laughs> um, and her favorite grandson, Chancellor and um, Troy. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, please put your hands together and give God praise for Sister Lillian Harris. Good afternoon. Welcome to this afternoon's worship service. We hope that you will enjoy it. We will begin the service with the hymn of praise. We come this far by faith by the male chorus of Russell Temple. Good afternoon, Russell Temple. Today, our hymn of praise is going to be we come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord. Come on and sing along with us this morning. We come this far by faith. <laughs> As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. Good morning. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come in the name of Jesus. Thanking you for this day. We thank you, O Lord, for your love and your kindness. Your peace and your understanding. We thank you. Lord, we just so glad to be alive this day. You have spared us and we are just wonderfully blessed. Now come amongst your people, dear Lord. Bless each and every one. We pray for the man on Russell Temple, Heavenly Father. Bless each one individually and collectively bless those that are come on the line to this service we pray for each one of them also the lord strengthen keep them in the hollow of your hand no heavenly father we pray that you would just 
wrap your loving arms around us. Forgive us for our sins and wickedness that we have caused against you and others. We pray, oh Lord, that you would just throw them to the sea of forgiveness, forgetfulness, and just <clears throat> show us the way to go. Now, Lord God, we pray that as we go through this day, that we be a blessing to someone else. And we pray that through these blessings, that you would be glorified, glorified and magnified through your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Let everyone say amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Hardy, for that prayer. At this time, we will have the affirmation of faith by Brother Jonas Adams. Following that, we will have the scripture by Sister Tammy Manning. Good afternoon, Russell Temple. Everyone looks so lovely today. And here's our affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand God the Father Almighty, from whence he shall came to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Good afternoon. Our reading, reading 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 1 through 7, and it reads, And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, at the Lord God of Israel, liveth before whom I stand. There shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of God came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Tarif that is before Jordan, and it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook and have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook of Tarif that, in before, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. God bless the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his holy word. Thank you, Brother Adams, for leading the affirmation of faith. And thank you, Sister Manning, for reading the scripture. At this time, we will have another hymn, another song by the male chorus, Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior. <laughs> Do 
by Sister Wanda Wynn, and after that, we will have the tithes and offering appeal by Exhorter Elaine Sherman. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, Mary McLeod Bethune. Mary Jane McLeod Bethune, born Mary Jane McLeod, American educator, state philanthropist, humanitarian, womanist, and civil rights activist. Bethune founded the National Council for Negro Women in 1935, established the organization's flagship journal, Afro-American Women's Journal, and resided as president or leader for myriad of African-American women's organizations, including the National Association for Colored Women and the National Youth Administration's Negro Division. She also was appointed as a national advisor to President Franklin D. Roosevelt, whom she worked with to create the Federal Council on Colored Affairs, also known as the Black Cabinet. She is well known for starting a private school for African-American students in Daytona Beach, Florida. It later continued to develop as Bethune-Cookman University. Bethune was the sole African-American woman officially a part of the U.S. nation that created the United Nations Charter, and she held a leadership position for the Women's Army Auxiliary Corps. Corps. For her lifetime of activism, she was deemed and acknowledged the First Lady of Negro America by Ebony Magazine in July 1949 and was known as the Black Press, known by the Black Press as the female Booker T. Washington. 
She was known as the first lady of the struggle because of her commitment to gain better lives for African-Americans. And she also remains the only African-American woman to start an HBCU. Um, she died in, I'm sorry. She was born in 1875 and she died in, April, on April the 6th, 1949. I'm sorry, May 18th, 1955. Thanks. Good afternoon, everyone. Now is the time that the Board of Christian Education will come to you to recognize the achievements of our students and adults. And today, we recognize the following. Master Bryce Carey, a second grader at Rock Run Elementary School. He continues to show progress and improvement in reading and math. Listen, reading and math, that's the key to life. Yes, his teacher has told his mom, Tiffany Carey, he is doing an amazing job. Congratulations, Bryce. Next, we have Master Kellen Payne, who is the great grandson of Sister Diana Murphy. He is a fifth grader who attends Akakik Academy. In January, he received the principal's honor roll, earning all A's and received an award from the National Elementary School Honor Society. Wow, wow. Additionally, he was selected for the talented and gifted program at his school. He plays the saxophone in the fifth grade, you guys, and has earned his second degree black belt in Taekwondo. Wow. Congratulations, Kellen. Next, we have another gentle, young gentleman from the um, Carey and Anderson fam family, Master Blair Carey, is a junior at Colonial Forge High School. He has been on the honor roll for all three quarters of this year. Congratulations, Blair Carey. And that is our highlights for today. We thank all of you for sending in your achievements. We will recognize everyone in the month of March and quarterly after this month. So thank you to the Board of Christian Education and our pastor, Michelle Parker. All right, good afternoon, everyone. It's time for our tithes and our offering. Thank you guys for springing forward with us and being on time. I woke up this morning with my spirit in the right place. I know Dell told me something and I didn't respond the way he wanted me. So I think he gave me the little side eye, but that was just because my spirit was in the right place. That's all. And you guys know how I feel about tithes and offerings. So let me see if I can expire somebody here. Luke 6. Chapter six, verses 38 tells us, we can hear that Jesus says, give it, give, and it will be given to you. Good, good measure, press down, shaking together and running over will put into your bosom, will be put into your bosom. But with the same measure that you, that you use it, it will be measured back to you. So what is, what is Christ telling us? He's telling us to give. This is not a matter of question, but a statement. Jesus calls for us to give into his kingdom and the beauty of his calling is not. And the beauty of his calling is not only will be our gift returned to us, but our blessing will be pressed down, shaken together and running over. It is like you have a cup in your hands and God turns on the faucet, but he doesn't stop at the halfway mark. He doesn't even stop at the top of the glass. He keeps pouring until before you know it, you've got water running over the side of your glass. It's pouring down your hands and spilling on the floor. And also Jesus said that with the same measure that you give, it will be returned to you. God is just to return to, our, to us our harvest in whatever size, you hear that, in whatever size that we planted. The more seed that is planted, the greater the harvest. So today, believe that when you give into God's kingdom, have faith that your gift will re return, pressed down, shaken together, and run it over. At um, Russell Temple, we have a number of ways to give. You can give via Givelify, 
You can give via cash app. You can mail your tithes into the church. You can drop them off in the mail slot at the church. You can contact one of the stewards. We will be happy to pick up your church. So I ask you today to please give as God has given unto you. Thank you. history moment. Um, thank you, Elaine, for the offertory appeal. And thank you, Sister Wynn, for the um, student recognition. At this time, we will have the Ministry of the Arts, a video, I Learned to Lean on Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, y'all, put your blessed hands together and give God praise. I don't know about you, but I've learned to lean on Jesus to trust and depend on Jesus. Mama may fail us, daddy may fail us, our best friends may not be there for us, but God is always there. And so we can lean and depend on Jesus. We are so blessed to be able to worship with you this afternoon and we give God glory for the great things that he has done. And we honor the God who did, the God who was, and the God who will always be. We praise God for all of you who have gathered one more time to worship him. And we say to all who have participated in the liturgy, thank you very much. Exhorter Sherman, Sister Harris, Brother Foster, Sister Tucker, the male chorus, Brother Hardy, Brother Adams, Sister Tammy Manning, Sister John Hardy, and, and to Sister Wynn, and to those who are working behind the scenes. Dr. O, Brother Adams, Brother Johnson, Sister Pace, and Sister Hardy. It is our mission statement at Russell Temple to develop and multiply disciples to advance the kingdom of God. And we do this through our 4G strategy. We gather for worship so we can grow in our discipleship, which enables us to give of our stewardship as we go into the world and tell somebody about the love of Jesus Christ. If you have a copy of the word, I invite you to hear the today's scripture lesson taken from 1 Kings chapter 17. Amen, 1 Kings chapter 17. 1 Kings chapter 17. And I will be rereading verses one through six from the King James Version. Hear ye the words according to the scripture. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Sherith, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook. And I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. To feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the Lord, unto the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook of Sherith that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. And with that, I wanna tag for a subject, brother Marcus, a place called there. Place matters. A place called there. Place matters. And this will be a part of a sermon series, a place called there. I always like to start with a joke, and this joke is entitled, The Old Sisters. Sister Benson, there were three sisters living together, ages 92, 
94 and 95 years old. The oldest one went upstairs one evening to take a bath. And as she was getting in the tub with one foot in and one foot out, she called down to her sisters, am I getting in the tub or am I getting out of the tub? I can't remember. The 94 year old decided to go upstairs to see if she could help figure out the situation. She got to the third step and stopped, then called out, was I going up the stairs or was I coming down the stairs? I can't remember. The 92 year old sitting in the kitchen at the table thought she better knock on wood. As she knocked on the kitchen table, she said, I hope I never get as bad as my two sisters. Now, was that somebody knocking at the front door or the back door? <laughs> Some of you will get that later <laughs> this afternoon. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for your omnipotence and your omniscience and for being omnipresent. We are so grateful, God, for your divine presence. Lord, overshadow me with your Shekinah glory. Stand up in me, God, so that I may preach your unadulterated truth. We want to be living epistles of your word. Empty us of self and fill us, God, with your love, your peace, and your hope. Help us to bloom where we are planted and to understand that place matters. He who has ears, let him hear what the church has to say. She who has ears, let her hear what the church has to say. In the sovereign, stupendous, supreme, and superior name of the Savior, we pray. Let everyone say amen, amen, amen. A place called there, place matters. Sister Fields, Elijah was one of the first in a line of prophets who God sent to Israel. Historians say he arrived at a very crucial time in the life of God's people. Because of Israel's disobedience, the 12 tribes of Israel are now divided into two kingdoms. The Northern Kingdom, which consists of the 10 tribes of Israel, and the Southern Kingdom, which, which includes the tribes of Judah and Benjamin. Sister Manning, on the throne, set a king by the name of Ahab, but the true ruler of the kingdom was his wife, Jezebel. Originally, Jezebel was a Phoenician princess who never gave up her worship to the god Baal and to the goddess Asherah. Jezebel's sway was not only influential over her husband, but also throughout the kingdom, which produced hardship for Israel. The worship of these gods, Baal and Asherah, has spread throughout the land. Deacon Murphy, when we hear the name Jezebel, the word control comes to my mind. As a matter of fact, adjectives like bossy, tyrannical, overbearing, don't look at your neighbor, domineering, dictatorial, and control freak may come to mind as well. The truth of the matter, the name Jezebel leaves a bad taste in most people's mouth. Jezebel is so despised that nobody named their daughter after her. Mother Battle, can I push this? There are no schools named after Jezebel. No Jezebel Elementary School, no Jezebel Middle School, no Jezebel Community College. There are no sports teams called the Jezebel Cats or the Jezebel Panthers, or the Jezebel Cougars. Brother Berkeley, can I push it? I've never seen a Jezebel golf course or a Jezebel sports arena. There is no Jezebel monument, statue, or landmark. There is no Jezebel ministry, no Jezebel Bible Institute, no Jezebel CME church, or Baptist church, or Presbyterian church, or Catholic church, nor a Jezebel Christian worship center. Denise, can I push it? I've never traveled to Jezebel, Michigan, nor traveled to a town called Jezebel Town, Delaware, nor Jezebel Bill, South Carolina. The truth be told, Jezebel loves to hang around the coast. As a matter of fact, she is usually one of the first ones to arrive. Since Sister Jezebel is the last one to leave. Jezebel, if I can be honest, is neither female nor male. Jezebel is a spirit 
that seek to destroy the kingdom of God. Sister Tyler Jezebel is manipulative, loves to conquer, and never accepts guilt for the things he or she has done. Jezebel is very defensive against church leaders. In fact, the Jezebel spirit tries to kill those in leadership. And how does the Jezebel spirit operate? By taking over the meetings, by derailing the leaders' plans, or turning folk against those God has placed in leadership. Thanks to God, no one then and no one now wants to be identified with Jezebel. Brother Hardy, it is in this context that Elijah is introduced to Israel. And according to Old Testament scholars, Elijah was the most prominent and exceptional prophet of Israel. What makes the calling of Elijah so peculiar, so extraordinary, is given right there in his biographical resume. The scripture reports in verse 1 that Elijah was a Tishbite and was an inhabitant of Gilead. Now, interestingly, that's all we know about Elijah. Touted by some who believe that Elijah was one of the most important prophets of the Old Testament, all we could find out, or all I could find out, is that he was a Tishbite from the land of Gilead. As a matter of fact, I could not find Tishbe and where it's located other than it's in Gilead. Gilead is east of the Jordan River, but I could not find any information about Tishbe. In this eruption of confusion, God does something that absolutely newly blows my mind and fuels my confidence in him. Sister Hardy, check this out. God, who can call anybody, goes to the backside of nowhere and finds a nobody to call into an assignment. Let me see if I can say it another way. God can go to an unknown place to call an unknown person and give that unknown person an appointment that would change the course of history. What a powerful yet simplistic statement. Come here, Hadassah, who was a nobody, who was the cousin of Mordecai. God brought this nobody from nowhere to a palace who would become somebody and marry King Darius. Hadassah, who was a nobody, became somebody when she became Queen Esther of Persia, who changed her people's history. Come here, Amenta Ross, who was a nobody, who lived on the backside of nowhere, was called into an assignment at an early age. This nobody from nowhere rose to become Harriet Tubman, who would make 19 trips to the South to lead her people to the promised land. Come here, Fannie Lou. Fannie Lou Hamer, God went to an unknown person who rose from an unknown place in the Mississippi Delta. This nobody from nowhere would become somebody who would be one of the most powerful voices of the silver and the voting rights. There are some of us today who were born in obscurity and nobody knows your name and nobody knows where you came from and nobody knows your people. Brother Fennell, Yes, the reality is you are present today because God, who can call a nobody from somewhere, found you, called you, and brought you from the back to the front and placed an assignment on your life. Somebody write in the chat from a nobody to a somebody. Somebody write in the chat from nowhere to somewhere. And as I dissected verse three, I began to see that God sends Elijah to the brook of Sherith. Now check this out. The brook of Sherith was 40 miles from the ocean and 13 miles from the Jordan River. Follow me now, don't miss this revelation. God sends Elijah to a brook during a drought, which is the smallest body of water compared to an ocean and the river. Sister Henry, now geographically using map ways, Elijah had to pass the Jordan River and can easily get to the ocean on his way to the brook. During the drought, 
Pay attention now. God sends Elijah to the brook, which is the smallest body of water. God sends him there and not the Jordan River and not the ocean. Comparatively speaking, there is more water in the ocean than the brook. Comparatively speaking, there is more water in the Jordan River than the brook. But God sends Elijah join a, a famine to the brook. God sends him to barely enough. It's all this sermons to a question arises in my mind. Can you be faithful to the place God sends you to even when something is bigger within proximity and accessibility? Can you be faithful to an assignment that looks smaller than everything around you and be satisfied because that's where God sent you? I'm talking about a place called there, place matters. The blessing is that always being in the bigger place. The blessing is not always being in the best place, but the blessing is being in the right place. Can I tell you that place matters? I don't have the biggest house, but I'm going to shout because I have a house. I don't have the biggest paycheck, but thank God I got the check. I may not have the fanciest of cars, but I thank God that I got a car. I don't belong to a mega church, but I thank God that I have a church. I don't have an ocean, but I have a brook. I may not have a river, but I got a brook. And I am where God would have me to be. Somebody give God praise. You may be on the road with someone who is an ocean resident or a river dweller, but don't hate on them because you need to recognize that God gave you something. Place matters just as much as I need about five people to write in the chat, place matters. Check this out. God created places before he created people. He created place first so he could put the people in the place. I'm trying to help somebody who may be dealing with some jealousy about your group because you see people who have an ocean and you see people who have a group and you see people swimming in their river and you see people swimming in their ocean and all you have is a brook. But can I tell you something, Brother Tyler? Your assignment and your gifting will never be in two places. Our job is not to argue where we want to be, but to discover and submit to where God would have you to be. And don't make the mistake of chasing what you are entitled to and miss out on what God has for you. How do I stay in a lesser place when I'm tempted by greater? Let me text this to your cell phone. Provision is always tied to a place. The Lord said to Elijah, I commanded the ravens to feed you there. Not just feed you, but feed you there. Place matters. The ravens are going to the place that I sent you. If you depart from my assignment and do it your way, then the ravens won't be there to take care of you. If you want provision, then you've got to go to the place that God told you to go. Why? Because place matters. Provision is coming to find you there, not the ocean, there, not the river, but there. There is the place that God told Elijah to go. That's the place where there's provision. Troy, can I tell you that you can be in a bigger place and have a bigger struggle if bigger is not where God assigns you? Can I tell you that you can have a bigger house and have a bigger struggle if bigger is not where God assigns you? You can be in a bigger school but have bigger struggle if bigger is not where God assigns you? You can have a bigger car and have a bigger struggle if bigger is not where God assigns you. Ministers, you can have a bigger church and have bigger struggles if bigger is not where God assigns you. Let me drop this in your drop box. God provides where God guides. Let me say that again for the millennials. God provides where God guides. Let me say it one more time to the octogenarian. God provides where God guides. Somebody in proximity is trying to figure out how you're making it with your broke salary. 
Somebody on your row is trying to figure out how you are making it with your brook clothes. Somebody on Zoom this afternoon is trying to figure out how you are making it with your brook job, with your brook paycheck. Somebody in your vicinity is trying to figure out, Sister Wynn, how you are making it with your brook car. Sister Murphy, it is because God keeps on providing. God will provide everything you need and make it look like a million dollars. Why? Because where God told you to be is where the provisions are. God told Elijah, I've already directed the ravens to feed you there. My provenient grace has already gone before you. My grace will meet you there. What you need will meet you there. Place matters. How do you think you survived some of the stuff you went through? God in his omniscience knew where you were going to be. So he prearranged. He orchestrated everything you needed before you got to the place called there. I need about eight people to write in the chat. The ravens are coming. The ravens are coming. The ravens are coming. Ravens represent unusual resources, unlikely resources. Ravens are vultures. They eat what is already prepared and left behind. But God has a way of having the ravens to do what they are not created to do. God is able to make the ravens do what is not in their DNA. God is going to make the ravens do something that is against their creative construct. Sister Carrie, can I pull over if I promise to keep the motor running? God says, I'm going to make the supervisor who does not like you promote you. God says, I'm going to cause the loan officer to give you that bank loan. God says, I'm going to cause the salesman to give you that car. God says, I'm going to cause the employer to give you that job. I am the one who makes a way out of no way. I am the one who engineers new trajectories. Psalms 23 says he will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Place matters. When the boss says, say the ravens are coming, God is about to flip the script. When the bank says, say the ravens are coming, God is about to flip the script. When the haters say, you say the ravens are coming, God is about to flip the script. God is about to flip the script and make folks help you who do not want to help you. Provision is tied to a place. Your assignment and your gifting are tied to where God wants you to be. Dr. Smith, as I close, I want to leave you with this illustration by the late Dr. Tedrick Sampson, place matters. Walking down the street in Washington, D.C., Dr. Frederick Sampson saw a rose growing in the valley and was so captured by the experience that he imagined the rose talking to him. Sister Palmore, he said to the rose, how in the world did you get here in the alley surrounded by pugnacious odors, surrounded by trash in a place where beauty is uncommon? And the rose speaks back to him. Well, Dr. Sampson, I had no choice as to where I was planted. When I discovered who I was, I was already in the eye. Sister Thorne, the rose said, I decided that I'm not going to let my surroundings determine my trajectory. I have found myself surrounded by all kinds of odors, but I decided not to participate in the scent but to release my fragrance and to create beauty where I am. I'm waiting on a transplant, but until that day comes, I've decided to bloom there. I've chosen to bloom right there because place matters. Brother Adams, until God moves me from my assignment, I will be still. Brother Johnson, I will be still. Sister Pace, I will be still. Dr. O, I have decided this time I will be still. This time I will be still. God directed Elijah to go to a place called there. And he told him to stay there because there was provision there. God 
through his infinite wisdom, knew that man was going to mess up way back in the Garden of, of the, the Garden of Eden. They were positioned there, but they were out of place. And so God had them to leave the Garden of Eden because they were disobedient. And since they were out of place, God had to come up with a remedy to help us to be back in place. And so he sent his son Jesus to a place called Calvary so we could be back in place. And I'm so glad that God allowed us through his son, Jesus, to be reconciled back to him through the shedding of blood. God wants you to be in a place of provision where you can hear the word of God and where you can work out your soul salvation and where you can become a part of God's family. Is there one here today on Zoom who has not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal faith? I invite you today to become a God of God be a part of God's family. The Bible tells us in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, that's me, whosoever, that's you, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Is there one today who wants to give their life to Christ? We ask that you can write your name in the chat. You can unmute your microphone and let us know. Is there one here today? Perhaps you already know the Lord and you're looking for a church home. We recommend Russell Temple CME Church. God would not have any of his children to be homeless. He wants them to be in a place of worship where they too can learn about Jesus. Is there one? Is there one? Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. And if by chance you're still contemplating and need more time, I'm going to write my name and my phone number in the chat, and you can give me a call at your earliest convenience, and we can talk about Jesus. Exhorter Sherman, announcements and remarks. Good morning, everyone. Again, our announcements for this Sunday. This worship service will be posted on Facebook and YouTube. Go to each one, like it, and share it. Students of all ages, please let Sister Wanda Wynn know if you made the honor roll, achieved special recognition, or received a special award in school. We want to celebrate your success and congratulate you in a job well done. This includes our adults as well. The spring convocation meeting will be held this Saturday, March 20th via Zoom. The registration for the convocation is $50. This can be paid online when you register. Please check your email for the registration information. Because of the date of the spring convocation meeting, the Saturday Bible study will be held on Friday, March 19th at 7 p.m. Again, that's Friday, March 19th at 7 p.m. The Easter Sunrise service will be held on Sunday, April 11th at 7 a.m. in conjunction with Bunton Memorial, Converted Heart, Lane Memorial, St. Matthew, and Williams Chapel CME Churches. Your help is needed. Please assist the missionaries in collecting empty medicine bottles. By popular demand, we will begin our new Bible study series entitled The Taming of the Tongue. This week, the promises, this promises to be an awesome, awe-inspiring experience as you endeavor to grow in your faith walk with God. Because of the Wednesday night Lenten service, Bible study will be held on Tuesdays at noon and on Saturdays at 10. However, this Saturday, we will not have it. It will be held again on Friday, March 19th. Reverend Parker will be attending school this week. If you need assistance, please contact our stewards, Dr. Smith or Exhorter Sherman. Because of the um, date of the spring meeting, oh, I'm sorry, um, church conference is postponed to Thursday, March 25th at 7 p.m. Again, we will have church conference on March 25th at 7 p.m. You are invited to join us on a transformational experience of corporate praying and fasting during the season of Lent, February 17th through March 31st. You can choose to do one of the following fasts, the Daniel fast, a social fast, or a financial fast. During this corporate Lenten season of praying and fasting, we are believing God for supernatural healing, deliverance, breakthroughs, miracles, and life-changing experiences. Each member of the church is encouraged to participate in the Andrew plan one by one. 
Everyone is asked to try to win one soul to Christ this conference year. Please continue to pray every day over the names of your family and friends who you would like to see safe. We're gonna send out our prayers to Sister Linda Carter as she's in Fairfax Hospital. She is taking phone calls. We will continue to pray for our bereaved families and our members who are sick, Sister Mary Hemphill and family, Sister Jana Hardy and family, Sister Wando Thurman Wynn and Brother Jeff Johnson and family, Sister Billy Adams, Sister Talise Gaither, Brother George Hardy, Sister Claudia Henley, Sister Carlene Jones, Sister Anise Kelly, Brother Norris Lamberson, Brother Bruce LeJong, Brother Obi Lovelace, Sister Pamela Murphy, Sister Berta Whitson, and our college students. I just realized I'm one of them, y'all, the college students. Pray for us. Pray for us, y'all. Reverend Parker, pray for Reverend Parker as she studies for her final exam. She will defend her doctoral dissertation on March 30th. We know that she got this. This is just a matter of formalities because we know that the Lord is in the mix and she has prepared for this, but we will pray. Also, we wanna pray for our families and friends, Mr. Charles Cole, the son-in-law, Sister Diana Murphy, Ms. Gloria Brown, the sister of brother Larry Foster, Sister Sharonda Finch, the niece of Sister Carlene Jones, brother Larry Foster, Mr. and Mrs. McKeffin, the aunt and uncle of Sister Hardy and Reverend H. Shirley Clanton. So please uplift these people in prayer. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much, Exhorter Sherman. And hats off to Sister Lillian Harris. You did an awesome job as our worship leader this afternoon. To all of our participants in the liturgy, God bless you. I'm Mel Chorus. Thank you so much. Amen. Um, I just wanted to share this testimony um, about a place called There, Place Matters. In the beginning of the conference year, I had gone to the steward board and asked if they would help me with tuition. And they had done it for the last two years. And I asked if I could have $2,500 to help with my tuition costs and expenses for school. Very, very expensive. But God had me to be in a place called there. And the Ravens came. And my school sent me a check that amounted to $2,500 that they receive from the CARES Act. So I no longer need what the church was gonna give me because God sent the ravens. Come on, y'all, give God praise, give God praise. God sent the ravens, amen, because I was in that place called there and it amounted to the amount that I had asked the church to give me as part of my compensation packet with education. And so I no longer need that because God provided by sending the ravens. God is good. And I'm just here to tell you that if you're in the right place where God would have you to be, if you would be obedient to being in that place, even though everything around you may be bigger, everything around you may be more prosperous, everything around you may be more fanciful, but if you stay where God put you, God will send the ravens to bless you. I'm a living witness that God provides and God guides. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Just want to thank God for Sister Tiffany Carey, who knocked it out of the park on Wednesday. I praise God for her letting go and letting God, and we were blessed tremendously by your message. Amen. Rise up. Amen. And then also, I want to thank the trustees who did an awesome job um, last week, yesterday, excuse me, at the Parsonage. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. We thank God for all of you being a part of our worship service today. Praise God from whom our blessings flow, followed by the closing prayer and benediction.
the benediction. Then unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his throne. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. Let the church say amen, amen, and amen. God bless you.